Hello everyone. Today's session is all about Adobe XD and Storyline. So thanks for joining us today. This session has been highly requested for months now. So it is time. It is time. And so hopefully, I mean, throughout this session, we're going to cover how to use Adobe XD for those of you who are completely new to it. I know some of you are much more experienced. Um, so Storyline, I've spent thousands of hours in Storyline, but Adobe XD, I've I haven't spent as much time in. So if there are any like super XD pros and you want to share shortcuts or tips or things that I don't cover, feel free to add it to the chat and we will explore it together. But another big takeaway I'm hoping you bring from this session is how to fit Adobe XD into your e-learning design and development process, right? Because it's a prototyping tool. So, uh, you know, UI and UX designers often use tools like Adobe XD. I think Figma is a popular competitor and there are others, but they use these to mock up and prototype like mobile apps or websites. Now, of course, we're designing and developing e-learning. So it is a little bit different, mainly because it's this like slide based fit fixed aspect ratio that we're working with when we use tools like Storyline or Captivate or other slide based authoring tools. So I have some examples lined up to show you as well. I think that will be cool to see. But the main takeaway here, and what I, what I hope you all will take away from this session is that Adobe XD is a great tool for visual prototyping. Okay, so we're not creating our, our storyboards in Adobe XD. And, and some people may do this, right? Like there are many ways to use this tool, but this is the way I use it and the way that it, the way that it makes sense to me naturally to bring this tool into the workflow. So again, what we use it for is to get the visual design side of things right before moving into Storyline. Okay, so I do want to show you some examples um, from Alex Drobik, Alexandra Drobik and Cassie Calvo. They're in the boot camp and they are working on some cool projects. And I just want to show you like good visual design is all about iteration. So we're going to start here. We're gonna start at you know point A. That's not what we're bringing into Storyline, right? Like some people just start in Storyline and do their designs in there, and that's how we end up with final products that don't look so amazing. And it may damage our credibility. It may make the final product more difficult to use for our audiences. So if you can get the visual design right before bringing it into Storyline, then that's something that you should definitely do. So. Let's look at this iteration. Let's see where people start and how they bring these projects into fruition. Okay. So let's check this out. So this project right here is Cassie Calvo's project. And it's about how to, it's about like lab safety. So in this like chemistry lab, essentially, how do you, how do you make safe decisions with the chemicals um, in the lab? Okay. So you see, we're starting with these very, plain wireframes, right? We have no images. It's just, we're, we're just working on the layout first, right? So I'm going to move through this relatively quickly, but you will see how this has come along. Okay. And maybe you'll notice some things early on where it's like, maybe that can be improved. Maybe the color choice, the contrast, the transparency, the placement. I'm just going to get, go through this slide slideshow mode. You see there's inconsistency in the text sizes. So as Cassie is going through this, she's requesting feedback on each one of these iterations. And well, I think she did a few iterations on, on her own and then she requests feedback and applies that feedback to bring it further along. You can see we're starting to introduce more contrast here. We have some, some different color options going on. Let's look at how this comes along, right? So we have a lot more contrast now. This text is very easy to read. Look at this. This text is popping out of the out of the screen at us more. These answer choices. Look at this. Look at this button now. It's much more visual. These graphics don't suit, don't fit as we can see. And you'll see how this, you know, the alignment is maybe a little bit off on this page. And again, you can just see how it keeps getting better and better and better with each one of these iterations. We still have these graphics. Let me move through a little more quickly. So here is one of our latest iterations, I believe. And I think we're still playing around with this continue button placement. I think we're going, we're trying to see how this looks centered now. But look at this, this graphic, you know, looks a lot more, a lot more cohesive. Look at this alignment, it's all fixed up. This looks much more consistent. 
everything is very easy to read, right? We, we look at the question first, we see this. When someone selects that um, Ask Ava button up here, that's when Ava comes out and shares more information with us. But you can see, I mean, this, I think this is a great example. You know, we came from this to what you just saw over here. And this is looking like so professional and clean. And let's look at Alex's project here. So Alex's project, so this one, of course, was like this scenario-based experience where you're choosing what to do, similar to what we're going to build today because you all voted for what we build and it looks like over, looks like 64% of you voted for a scenario-based e-learning experience. So we will be building something similar today. And um, Cassie isn't at this session, but she will be catching the recording. <laughs> so let's look at Alex's now. So Alex's project is really cool. It's this like color scheme selector for instructional designers. So when you're going into a project, if you want to use a color scheme, Alex is creating a tool that, that you can use to find one of these curated color schemes that she has created for us. So what you will notice in this project is that the concept got a little ironed out as we went. Like Cassie or um, Alex had a few different ideas of where she could take this and you will see that here. So let's watch how this one comes along. You can see there's, there's some information here. I think at, at first, she was trying to provide like a, a make more of a learning experience where it's about how to select your own um, color scheme. But then we wound up going a different direction where it's it's just a tool that provides her curated color schemes. So let's just look at how this comes together. It's 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 you'll you will see. I'll move through it relatively quickly. There are like seventy something slides here, but just just watch it come to life. You can see how she's experimenting with these these different layouts, these different designs. I think here's where she was playing around with a different concept, like we're going to do individual colors instead of a color scheme. Different textures we can see that she's playing with. Just wait until you see where this comes, though. Now that she's introducing these like really nice images, we can see it's bringing a little bit more life to this. Okay, still this iteration. We can see, you know, a new layout incorporating the photo. How will this look? We see she's... I'm introducing like some mood words and some recommended uses for these color schemes, playing around with these images still. I thought these slides were really cool, especially the ones where the aspect ratio works out. Like, let's see, like, look at this. Like, it's so nice seeing how the color scheme came from the image. But I think we suggested maybe simplifying it. And since the focus is on, you know, getting the hex code for these colors so you can use it in your project, we wound up going more in this direction. Look at this now. So look at what we started with. And now this is like such a, it brings the focus right to these color schemes. This will look very familiar to some of you if you have used tools like this. But I think what's different here is that these are like curated color schemes and there will be like 10 of them or so. And Alex is still working on this. She's going to add more like UI elements so that you can get, you can access some information about like the mood associated with these colors and, and the hex codes will be right here and you can click them and they'll automatically be copied to your um, clipboard so you can paste it in your authoring tool. But I, I think this is great. And, and it just really shows, like going through these slides, like how iter iterating on the visuals in Adobe XD like can really, you know, you can really get things ironed out before you go into storyline. OK, so we're going to work on something like this together. And, and again, Alex is still working on this, you know, connect with with Alex and Cassie on LinkedIn if you want to see how this progresses, because I'm sure they'll be sharing the final products there. Okay, so if there are any questions so far, feel free to add them to the chat. I have not been looking at the chat. So Sarah is asking, are you prototyping interactivity? Sarah, what we're, what we're, we're only prototyping the visuals. So we want to make sure that we get the visuals right for each type of layout that our, our project will include before bringing it into Storyline. So for example, some people have reached out to me and they're like, I'm building out my entire course in Adobe XD. I'm building out this entire storyboard should I be doing this? Like, what's the point if I'm going to have to redo all of this in Storyline? And the point is, is we don't, we don't want to build every slide in XC. We only want to build one type of each layout, right? Like if we have a question slide, we're going to keep iterating on that question slide over and over until we have a really good looking question slide. We don't need to do that question. We don't need to do that slide for every question in our storyboard. 
Okay, once we have that single question slide looking good in XD, then we go into storyline, we duplicate it, we change the text, we change the image, we change the answer choices, but, we're, but we know that the layout is really strong because that's what we iterated. We iterated the visuals of it. And we're going to go through this process together. We'll see how far we can get in the next um, 50 minutes or so. Yeah, I see great feedback on the projects. They look very professional. Yeah, it's cool because you don't like a lot of people are not super confident on the visual design side of things. I definitely was not coming into this field and I'm, I feel okay at it now, but I'm not like this graphic design pro or anything like that. But, but I do recognize that it takes a lot of iteration to land on a good professional design. So every project I work on, I'm not just diving into storyline. I'm using XD first to iron out these layouts, get feedback and make, and, and even step away from it for a day or two and then come back to it and see if I can improve it on my own. So that visual, and, and the reason we do this in XD is because XD is very, it's, it's quick to use. It has some productivity tools where you can build things much faster in there than you, than you can in storyline. So it's just a more efficient workflow when you're like starting over on that slide over and over and over. It's a bit like, it's a bit quicker of a tool than storyline. So that's why we use XD. Okay, I see we're sharing the LinkedIn's of Cassie Calvo and Alex uh, Drobik. Okay, let's see any other questions before we dive into this. I see we have a question about the, the elements that we're using in XD. Are those already available in XD? No, we're, you, we're pulling them from um, like stock, stock image sites or paid image sites. We're getting these vector illustrations, maybe modifying them in Adobe um, Illustrator and then bringing the visuals into XD. So XD is just to like work out the layout and, and bring the things onto the page. There are some UI kits available where it's like a set of these icons or visuals that you can use. I don't, I don't really use those, um, but those are an option where you can have like this whole image pack embedded within XD if you download one of those um, UI kits. John is pointing out prototyping the interactive elements is very simple, but it's pretty much path-based, so you'll need to be creative. Um, for me, again, and, and we're, we're going to dive into this, but the reason we're not doing the, the, the interactivity in Adobe XD is because we're going to design the interactivity anyway in Storyline. Like we know what, what it needs to do. And when I put something in front of a client, like when I need them to sign off on a prototype for look and feel and functionality, I'm doing that in Storyline because Storyline is what the final product will be in. So yeah, once we get the visuals worked out, we know what the what the functionality will be. Like that's pretty straightforward. Can we make it work? And in storyline, you may as well just make it work in storyline. But I'll show you how to do some basic interactivity as well once we dive into it. But okay, so dive into it, we shall. Let me share my screen here. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat for questions. And I don't know what we're going to be able to get done in the next 45 minutes, but we will see. So let's close these mockups that we looked at. These were beautiful. So I do want to mention this is this is how I learned Adobe XD for the first time. I just used their documentation. Okay. And I just I just used it to get a feel for the user interface, learn what I needed to know. This is what helpx.adobe.com slash support slash XD. I'll share this link in the chat if anyone wants to bookmark it, but they had pretty good documentation, this get started guide. And this is like a free tool for personal use. And it's included in the Creative Cloud for, I would imagine, commercial use. So the, these resources are helpful, but let us dive into it. So like right before this session, I saw we were going to do a scenario-based learning experience. So I tried to make this a little simulated, you know, a little snippet of a text-based storyboard, right? Because before I touch Adobe XD, usually I have this text-based storyboard ironed out and approved by my clients so that we know exactly what text needs to go into this project. We know which answer choices we have, and we know what the consequences are when someone selects one of those answer choices. Because again, we're designing a, a scenario-based learning experience here. That's what people voted for. So I, I, so I wanted to just show you what that would look like without actually pulling up a client project, obviously. So I just came up with this random question. You've been playing video games for three days straight. It has been fun, but you're wondering if you should do something else. What would you like to do? And now we have these choices. Do we go to the beach? Do we stay indoors? Or do we go on a camping trip? And this is, this is obviously random. I don't have any, I would usually have like an action map behind this. So we identify, we need people to make these choices and practice performing these behaviors. And that's what I would use to design this text-based storyboard. 
But that's not what this session is about. So the, the important takeaway here is probably before going into XD, you should know like conceptually what your project is, what content is going to be included in that project and so on and so forth. But I can imagine a world where you might just like designing the visual side of things before designing the actual content. Could backfire on you if your visual designs don't work for the content you wind up having. But in this case, we know we're gonna have three choices. We're gonna have consequence slides. We have a pretty good idea of what, what we need to do. And as usual, I, I, you know, I've mentioned this before, I bought this like, I subscribed to this like get, getillustrations.com site and they have like all of these cool illustration packs. And I think I bought this just so that on sessions like this, we can like use them. I think last, last session we used these contemporary illustrations. But for this session, I wanted to use these ones. They're like cool colors. They're like very vibrant. Um, so I just downloaded this illustration pack. I pulled out some illustrations for us to use for this project. And they also have these like separated by like different individual objects. So before this session, again, right before I went ahead and exported some of these. So we have like, you can see which images we're working with. That's what we have going on on you know, that's, that's the pre-work I've done on this, okay? Um, Reina is asking, do I share the text-based storyboard with the client via a Word doc or something else? I share it with them via this beautiful Google doc that you see right here so that they can just hover over something and say, you know, this consequence isn't good, like, you know, whatever you need to say. So I just use Google Docs because it's so easy to collaborate with them. The updates are in real time. I, I, I get this approved from the client before moving forward. But okay, I think it is time for us to get building. Okay, so I have Storyline open here and I have Adobe XD open here. You can feel free to follow along. Again, you're not going to have the assets I have, so it might just be good to, to watch what we're doing, maybe take some notes. And then if you want to actually try recreating what we do, maybe watch the replay and go through it more slowly. So when I dive into this, I usually just select this web screen right here because we can always change the options. Or, or this right here, you can actually set a custom size from this home screen. And something very important here, when you're working with Adobe XD and Storyline, you need to be very careful about which size your artboard will be in Adobe XD, right? If you're familiar with Storyline, you know we can change the size of this slide. Right now it's this desktop, desktop aspect ratio, but if you've been at many of these sessions, you know that we change the story size by going to this design tab and selecting story size we like this nice 16-9 aspect ratio. This is more widescreen. If you turn a phone screen sideways, this will fill the whole screen. And it's the same aspect ratio as like videos, like YouTube videos or any other videos. So I will also make the artboard bigger. Instead of 720 width, I will go with 1280 width. So now you see the size of our story, so to speak, in Storyline is 1280 by 720. So look at how this looks. It's very important that in Adobe XD, we match this because if we do not, our, desi our design in Adobe XD is not going to translate into Storyline because the sizing is going to be all mixed up. It might fill the screen in Adobe XD, but when we bring it over here, it might be way too tall and we have a ton of white space on the sides. Okay, so we, so we need to make sure that these match exactly. So in Adobe XD, we're going to make our, our artboard 1280 by 720. So we will go to Adobe XD and we can just set this right here. So we will do 1280 by 720. Now we'll just click on it to dive into it. And now if we zoom out, you can, you can see how these both look. You, know, you can tell they're exactly the same aspect ratio, right? So that's what we're going for. We don't want the aspect ratio to be mixed up. Very important. Um, Alicia asked what the dimensions are. Um, 1280 by 720. Okay. So for those of you who are brand new to Adobe XD, I'm holding down the Alt key on my keyboard and zooming in and out with my mouse wheel. That's how we can zoom in and out here. Okay. When you select this, um, when you select this name right here, this is the name of your artboard. If we double click it, we can name this. We will name it Question Slide. Okay. There we go. And now we need to start actually adding things to this page. So one, th one way you can do that is you can just drag a an image right onto this, right? But now this is like really big. We need to like resize it and everything, you see? So another way that we could do this is you can actually draw a rectangle. So over here on the left, I'm just selecting this rectangle tool. And now we can draw a rectangle for where we want this image to sit. 
Okay, so you see how I just drew that? Now, if I drag an image from my desktop into that rectangle, it will fill the rectangle. You see now how this rectangle is highlighted? When I let go, you see that the, it's, it's kind of contained within that. Now, it doesn't look perfect. And the reason for that is because these artboards, if you look, this is in a Adobe Illustrator. There's a lot of like dead space around these. And I didn't have the time before this to like fix up the artboards. So we're going to have to do some fixing up in these tools. So we're back in XD. I'm going to, once, so once you have this and you try to drag it, it's going to drag the rectangle that we created. And so to get inside that and actually move around the image that we, we put inside of that shape, we have to double click it. So just like in Adobe Illustrator or, or some similar tool, you, when you double click something to get into a group or a clipping path, we're double clicking on these on this to like get inside of it and actually edit the image. But you can see how it's like a mask. Like when this is extending out to the left, it will actually be cut off. So really what we're doing is creating a mask here. So I don't love the shape of this. I'm just going to remove it and I'm going to just bring it in free form. I just wanted to show you that functionality and we will, we will play around with placement here. So you remember the first prompt is we're spending way too long playing video games. So let's just move this around. Something like this looks good. We know we're going to need some text on the slide. So I'm going to press this little T button right here to add text. And now we need to add our, our question. So I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to start typing, but now I'll go over to my text-based storyboard and I'll just copy and paste this. So I'll do control C to copy. I'll go back over to XD and I will, I will paste it. Okay. So this is always something that is, for us, this this frustrates me. Like you see here, we can't just like resize this to make it go onto the next line. So one way to go about this is of course to like just like press enter for line break breaks, but that is obviously not very eloquent of a solution. So we need to make sure that we need to make this read differently. So how do we do that? Auto width. What about this? Okay, here we go. So what I did is I changed this to fixed size. So with this text box selected, instead of um, this auto width option, I changed it to fixed size. And now I can drag it around like a typical text box and it will kind of free flow, fill whatever we have here. Okay, so you see how we did that? So change it to fixed size so that we don't have to deal with that like auto resizing where it's changing the font size for us when we don't want it to do that. And let's, is this a line break here? We don't want that and it's still acting funky. So this, this text is obviously way too small. And let's actually, I'm going to change this to my brand, like font, so to speak. Still way too small. Let's make it size like 36. And instead of book, maybe we will make this bold. Maybe I think this is too big now. Let's try 28. <laughs> Okay, well, before we do any, let's just do this like basic prototype, get the things on the slide that we need, okay? Before we do anything fancy. So we know we will need this and we know we will need answer choices. So I'm just going to draw another rectangle here. I'm going to match the width of that question. And now we know we will need something inside this rectangle. Our first option is go to the beach. So we will just say go to the beach. Okay, we have our answer choice. So now we have the elements on the page. This is a bit of a, you know, a bit of a wireframe. This could have just been a rectangle too. Like we could have just, okay, we're going to have a rectangle here. So in, in the previous sessions, you see me just iterating on this slide as we go. But what's fun to do in Adobe XD is to just like copy and paste the slide so that you can kind of see your progression. I think that's a cool part about XD. So that's what we will do here. Now, I don't know if I've been taking this for granted, but when you're in this tool and you want to, like say we're in the text tool, you see right now how my cursor is like, um, if I click, it will be placing text. You can, you can get there by just pressing the T key on your keyboard. And then when you want to go back to the arrow where you can like select different elements, because again, if I want to select this right now and I click it, it's just going to make a text box that obviously doesn't work for us. So we want to press the V key on, on our keyboard. Like it's, you know, it's kind of like a little upside down pointer. Same thing in Adobe Illustrator and I think Photoshop. So when you press V, it will put us back to this point where we can actually select things and move them around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the slide title here or the artboard title. I'm going to click on that. 
And now I can copy and paste this artboard. So I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard to copy it, and then Control V on my keyboard to paste it. Okay. So now we need to work on this a bit more. Um, one thing I'm thinking about right now is like, this is a kind of a lot of text. This is our, our actual question. So part of me is feeling like, should I bring less attention? Well, we need the context. So that's something I'm thinking about. I want to make this button look more interesting. And this right here with this background just looks like out of place. So I think what we need to do is let's bring this blue from this background and just make it like the entire background color of the slide. So my, my habit, what I usually do is I use a rectangle, just bring it to the back of the stack and make it that color. But I'm sure there's a way we can actually change the slide color of this background. So I'm going to select this artboard. We can see here appearance is fill. Right now it's a white fill, but I'm going to select this eyedropper. And now I'm just going to select this color right here. Okay. So you see now this kind of blends better. The picture kind of blends in with the scene a bit more. So that's good. So let's see about this font here. Does, the, does this color look good? I don't know if we have enough contrast here. This isn't even like an actual black. Let's see how white looks. Okay, that's transparency. Let's see how this looks. Okay, white is definitely not enough contrast. So let's do black. Okay, so this pure black is good. I mean, I, this looks like we have much better contrast here. So I'm going to update that with these other fills as well. I'm just going to do 0, 0, 0 as our hex to change it to that black. Same thing with these borders. We want to be consistent. Okay. You can see that these strokes are like very thick. I mean, these, these the font here is very thick and this like border on the, this stroke around this shape is not very thick. So I think we need to bring that up a notch. So I select this rectangle. We're looking at, you know, this, this over here on the right, of course, is where we can change all these properties as you've seen. Let's bring the size up from one, and this is the border size. Let's try like four. I think that looks a little better. Three, maybe four. If okay, four is looking pretty good, let me know what we think. Okay, I see people saying the pace is too fast. <laughs> I mean, feel free to add, ask questions if, if you're wondering about what I'm doing here. But the main takeaway so far is press T to add text you know, press T either over here on the left or on your keyboard, press V to go back to your pointer and drag things around. And all we're doing is adding, and then you pre we press this rectangle tool to add a rectangle, right? That's, those are the main things we've done. And we select this, we select this title up here to access these slide properties. So whatever we select on the slide, we're changing the properties for that thing over here on the right. Okay. So that's what I've been doing too. Okay. So that's why when we select this up here, we can change things about the, the artboard itself, like the fill. And when we select these individual things like the text box or the image, we can change things for those specific items. Esther asked, is the text box dropped on the option box or is it part of the box itself? Yeah, it's just a text box, you see? So this is just a rectangle and this is just a, a text box. Okay. So let's see if we can move forward here. I want to bring some icons into this. Okay, like you see here, I have this beach icon. I, I think that would look nice on here. So one way to do this again, let's let's do it. Well, one way to do it, of course, would be if we bring this rectangle. We bring a rectangle here and we use this as the mask for our image. So let's see how this looks. I don't want to, I don't want to do this yet. Okay. Well, we're just going to, we're just going to pretend that this is our image. What other options do we have? Go on a camping trip. Let's see how long that one will be. Okay. So this is our longest answer choice. So I don't, these things don't need to be so wide and maybe what we do, maybe, well, let's, let's just play around with it. Okay. We're going to play around with a few options. I want to show you all something really cool. Okay. So I think this is a good time to do it. This is, this is one of the best features I would say about Adobe XD. So check this out. We have this here, we have this here. We know that these will hold up our images. So look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to select each of these items. So first select this rectangle, hold down shift and select the text box. And while we're holding down shift, we will also select this, this rectangle. 
So we have all things selected. And if you've been to these other sessions, you know how we group things here. We do control G. And that's true across many different tools. Okay, so now when we move something, it's a group. So if we wanna modify something individually, we have to double click into it, just like we did over here to double click into the picture when it was within a rectangle, and we can move the individual elements. Okay, so this is a group. So when we have something grouped, we can use this very cool feature in Adobe XD called the repeat grid. Okay, so does everyone see this option right here? This is, I'm telling you, your, your mind may be blown if you haven't seen this before, it is really cool. So we know that we need three of these buttons, right? So this would be a good time to use that repeat grid. So with this group selected, I select the repeat grid. And now that you see we have these handles on the bottom and to the right of this object. So if we drag this handle down, it's just going to repeat what we have as long as we drag. So watch this. So you see, we're kind of just painting on more buttons and we can just keep going. You see that? So let's go with the three. We know we need three. Um, if we want to add more spacing between them, look at this. We have a handle here to modify the spacing. If you think this is cool, just wait. Just wait. It gets better. Okay, it gets better. So we're modifying the spacing here. We can expand it out to the side too, but we don't want to do that right now. Okay, are you now are, are you all ready for the actual really cool part, which is like you you will see now how these workflow efficiencies can really help using a tool like this instead of storyline. Check this out. So let's change our text. We know we don't we don't need to go to the beach. We want stay indoors. And we want go on a camping trip. You all thought that was cool. Just watch now, okay? Just watch. So we know what we need. So we need our beach icon, we need our stay indoors icon, and we need our camping trip icon, right? So we have these three things selected. I'm just holding down the control key on my keyboard to select multiple things, just like we did in XD. So now when we watch when we drag this onto one of these masks. Oh no, why isn't it letting us? Oh, I think because this image is like in the way. Get out of your image. Let's draw this. So you see, so check that out. <laughs> so when you drag a multiple images into a repeat grid, it will automatically fill out the repeat grid. Let me just show you this again, like with another example. So I'm just gonna make a new slide here to show you all in a more simple format what this can do. So check this out. So we have a shape here. Okay. So we're gonna use the repeat grid and just multiply this shape a couple of times. And now when we drag, let's select these like bigger ones. So we'll do beach, camping, and stay indoors. When we drag this on, it automatically fills in the boxes. You see? So really cool way to like quickly add images that you need. And again, these are usually just visual prototypes. So you can see here, they like don't actually match up. Like this one needs to be stay indoors. Uh oh, messed it up on a camping trip and this one needs to be stay indoors. So we obviously want to get rid of the um, stroke on this box. So to get back into now this group, again, I'm double clicking to access these things. So we do not want a border on this since we just want the image. And now I maybe I'll resize these a little bit better. And I also wanna actually just extend this out more. Like I don't want it to be clipped unnecessarily. I don't want it clipped like that for the project. Now I'll double click back in, resize it a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Let's play around with this one. So it's, it's really up to you how much time you want to spend in here. Like I think it's good to really lay out one slide and maybe it will look better if we like keep it flush with the bottom for these, for these shapes. And usually, again, when I'm working on a real project, I will export these better. Like you see the image is like, like look at what this image is. See how these artboards are so big. Usually when I export something like this, when I have more time, I'll drag it out and I will just make an artboard that perfectly fits it. So you see how this would like play much better in Adobe XD. Okay, so let's get back into XD. I'm just trying to make this look a bit nicer. Let's 
expand this out. But the thing is, is yeah, this, these buttons aren't super like doing it for me because we have so much like dead, you know, so much empty space here. So now watch when we move this over in one of them, they all move over, you see? So when we, when we move up, when we make this shorter in one of them, they all get shorter. So that's like it really, that's, that's one of the benefits of these repeat grids because not only do we not have to like make, make each slide from scratch or make each slide in here, like we only have to make one button and then we can, we can copy it and any changes we make to that button get changed. The changes get made all down the line. Okay, so this is cool. Maybe we this can be a little smaller now. Mm, no, I don't love that. So now I'll usually just start playing around with placement so we can move this up maybe. Maybe this can be a little bit bigger. We have a lot of space here. And, and if there are any questions about what we did, definitely feel free to ask them. So I think one of the things about this is, oh good, we can change it separately. Don't know why it's not letting me change this, the text size here, maybe because this is too small to fit that. Okay, so everyone see what I'm doing. I'm playing around with placement. I'm looking at balance. I'm looking at how much space is above this, how much is below. Like I said earlier, I, was, I wasn't loving that this was all the same like hierarchy because this is the actual question. What would you like to do? This gives us some background information. So maybe not quite as important and direct here. How are we feeling about this? Let me see. I see we have some questions. Did I use a hotkey for adding that artboard? What I did to add the artboard and what I usually do is I just click on one artboard and then I do, I do copy paste. So control C, control V, it makes a new one. So that's, I'm sure there is a hotkey to just add it directly. But again, that's what I said for any XD pros in here, if you have better shortcuts, feel free to let us know. So Sharif is saying that they find the grid feature really helpful when designing an XD. That's a good suggestion. Let's take a look at that. So. If we select this artboard or this slide title, we can turn on the grid. So again, this, this option will only show up to you if you select the actual artboard. So that's why we, oh, and then Robbie pointed out that control D will duplicate. So perfect. So I'm just doing an extra step. So you don't need to do control C, control V. You can just do control D to duplicate an artboard or an object. Okay. So. With this artboard selected, let's select this grid option, okay? So there's this layout grid. It will, it will make 12 boxes or 12 rectangles appear. Let's do it. Okay, we can see it better here. So 12 is like the, it's like a standard number of columns when it comes to designing web layouts. A lot of these like UI libraries, like like Bootstrap, if anyone is familiar with that, it's a CSS library. It's always in a it's always in twelve columns, so that, that's why there's twelve here by default. But if we wanted to change these things, again, we will select the artboard, scroll down to grid, and we can change the number of columns. We can change the column width, so maybe we make it one hundred, and we can change the gutters, which are which these are the spacing between the columns. So twenty, uh, let's do one twenty. That's too big, so let's do like 90. Okay, so this, I want to make it a little bit smaller so the gutters on the right and left are about the same size. So let's do that. Let's do 88. This, lo this looks good. I don't, I honestly don't work with these a ton. So if, again, if anyone else has any tips and that changes them for the individual slide when we change these settings. Okay. All right. Um, so we're, I see questions about bringing this into storyline. So I think it's almost, I think it's about getting time to do that, but you can see how these grids would help if we, if we are sticking with it, I, I usually am playing it by eye because I've played around with this a lot, but one of my next visual design goals is to get better at working with grids and like the golden rule and the rule of threes and all of those, all of those concepts. But, Usually I'm making simple-ish layouts like that. So let's quickly make a new slide. Okay, we need a slide 
that's going to show the consequence now. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one. If you can click it. You can click and drag these artboards by selecting their name and just dragging. So I'm bringing this one beneath, and now we want to show a consequence. So let's get rid of this image. Instead, I want to bring in. So let's say we selected to go to the beach. So we'll bring beat the beach option over here. Let's resize it a bit to make it fit better. You, you can see these illustrations are pretty fun. <laughs> I'm not sure how this is going to look with um, get rid of this. So obviously, this blue background isn't going to look. So let's change this background color to the color in this image. So we're going to select the, the artboard title. We're going to select the eyedropper. And then we're going to select this. Uh, kind of looks awkward because parts of the image are like cropped off, obviously. But we didn't have enough time to put a ton of thought into this. So we're going to have to make do with what we've got. So we don't need these answer choices here because this was actually the wrong choice. So I'm just going to copy and paste the text associated with this. Need to expand this out a bit, or this is fine. Maybe we want, maybe this is a little big. Let's make it a little smaller because you saw our feet were like really close to the text. We want to make sure we have enough margins. If you are newer to visual design principles, I have a, a, a short YouTube video about that and a whole crowd cast about visual design principles. So I don't think we'll focus on that a ton here. Again, I really don't love like how these parts are thrown off, but I don't think we have time to address that right now. So we're just going to do a quick layout. I think we need a button here, like a try again button because we chose the wrong choice. When we go to the beach, here's what happens. We go to the beach, grab our swim tube and order a martini from the beachside bar. Life is good. A few hours later, we wake up with a sunburn and hang over miles from the shore. So this is the wrong choice. So we need to try again. So let me just like maybe pull one of these rectangles and let's see if we could turn this into a button. So what I did there is I just double clicked to get into this and then I copied and pasted the actual rectangle after selecting the rectangle. So let's make this a bit smaller. We need some text and we will just say try again. I'm going to select both of these pieces, drag it over here. Make this a little bit smaller, I think. A little bit more. Okay. So I think this will have to do for now, even though it looks awkward with this image. So now here are our options, right? Like what we can do is say, OK, we designed this slide. Now we need to design these other two um, consequence slides, right? Like we need to just start building out this whole thing. That's not what we want to do, OK? Well, we're, we're just, like I've mentioned earlier, we our goal here is just to design one type of each layout, essentially. OK, so we have our question screen layout, and now we have our consequence layout. So what we need to do, so now that we know, OK, this is how we want this laid out, there's no point in making three more slides just like this in XD, because we can just create them in Storyline. And what I will usually do after getting things laid out here is I will just recreate it from scratch in storyline, like mirroring it. But I know everyone doesn't love that concept of having to recreate things. But like, again, what I would do is I would say, OK, I'll have this open on my other monitor or whatever it is. And I'll say, OK, let's bring in this um, gaming image. Let's bring it in over here. And I'll bring him over here. I'll say, OK, let's change the background color now to the same color. So I will do the eyedropper, right? So you see how I will. That, that's what I do. I literally just do step by step what I did in XD. But the difference now is I know what I bring in here will be right the first time. It's much easier. I'm basically just tracing a visual design I've already done. And to bring that, that point home a bit further, let me show you something you can do to assist with that. So we can actually export this artboard and then bring in this entire image into Storyline. So let me show you. So I'm going to, to select this artboard just like we've been doing. I'm going to just click it. And I'm going to select this menu option and then go to export. And then I will do selected because I have this artboard selected. Designed at one time. So, okay, we'll export to the desktop. Export for design. That's fine. 
we because we have our aspect ratio matching this perfectly, so it should be fine. So we export. It should be on our desktop now. Here it is, question slide one dot PNG. So now I'm just dragging over this, this image file to storyline. So look at this, right? So here we have it, it matches perfectly. If we align this centered, you see it's like the perfect fit for the slide. Okay, so now a couple of things come into play. And let's see if I can actually demo this right here. So I'm going to publish this project. So let's just see how this looks. If we create this for the web, we'll publish it to my desktop. And now let's view it. So it honestly doesn't look so bad. So you may be able to get away with this, but the reason I'm hesitant to do that is because it, an image of text doesn't usually scale well. And you can be it can be getting blurry for certain, on certain screens or at certain sizes. So that's why I'm very hesitant to just use this image file. I mean, on top of that, if you wanted to like animate in these answer choices, for example, that would not be an option because this is just an image file. It's one thing. I can't just go in here now and select this button and add a trigger to it. So if you did things this way, you would have to literally, you would have to add in hotspots to add interactivity essentially, essentially, like you see how we do a hotspot. You would need to get creative with how you're adding the alt text here, like because no screen reader can read this image. So maybe you right click it and go to accessibility. And now you have to actually copy and paste the text in here to accessibility. So it, it can lead to some issues if you're just trying to just have an images of the slides you've created in XD just brought in right here to storyline. So if we just use the, if we just bring this to our background and now kind of like just use this to try to like trace it and match it, you see what I'm doing here? Then we, we get the benefits of maybe any scaling that needs to be done. Um, the text can be an actual text box. So you see, I'm just going to insert a text box and I'm going to just copy and paste this text. Now the text will be able to scale on its own. Screen readers will be able to read this. We don't need to worry about the text getting like blurry or fuzzy. This is obviously looking really confusing. I never, I never actually do this where I bring in the, um, the background as like part of it. But I thought some people may, may like this. So let's like hide this now. So you see, this is like what we're actually copying. We do not need this hotspot. Let's show this again. So now I would insert a shape and I would just trace it right over this one, right? So we're, again, we're just rebuilding it now, but now it's much easier. We've already done the hard work. We've done all the, the fixing in here. We know exactly how we want things to look. We're able to make changes to our button without going, you know, without making all the buttons in storyline and then saying, oh, these need to be actually a little, like we want these to be positioned differently. Like let's, again, it's, it's more efficient in XD, I would say, once you know your way around the tool. I get this question a lot, how do we move things over? I don't have an amazing answer to that. Um, I, I just recreate it in here because I don't want to worry about how this image will scale. So again, it looks fine in, in our little test. So maybe it's something you might want to try to get away with. Like this looks fine. The, the quality looks good. It's not blurry, but it's risky because this isn't actual text I can do anything with. It's just an image. So I hope that was clear. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and see if we have any questions about this or if there's anything I missed. So um, we have 10 minutes. So let's see what's going on in the chat. So I see John is asking about why he would want to use a grid. Amy suggests that she uses grid for the purposes of symmetry, but doesn't use them a ton herself. Alicia, grids are helpful to align different elements. Yeah, they're good for alignment and John, I was taking this like design course and there are, there's actually like a science between b behind how you can use these grids. And like, if you follow these grid patterns in certain ways, like based off of these like mathematical principles and stuff like that, then you wind up with a result that is very visually appealing. So at a basic level, yeah, it's useful for, useful for keeping things aligned and, and making sure you have spacing between things. You know, you can use those grid gutters to kind of build spacing in. But if you, if you use some of those other principles, I imagine we can get some much more complex and like professional looking designs. I'm not there yet. That's something I need to play around with more and practice with. But I think we can all expect some 
how to use grids in e-learning um, sessions sometime this year or next, because that is on my list of things to learn and get better with. Oh yeah. Heather, grids can help you visually balance the size and positioning of items. Nice. Okay, Robbie is just emphasizing these keyboard shortcuts, T for text, V for selection. And these are the same keyboard short, like these keyboard shortcuts are across many different tools. Same thing like control G to group something and control shift G to ungroup something. Paddy, so you mirror it versus copying it. Yep, as you can see, it's a lot of, now we now that we have these layouts, well, let's get to like the part though, like let me show you something. So part of this, and let me, maybe this will bring home like why it's better to do it in XD first is once we create this here, so again, I mean, I don't know if we have time to like actually do this, but once we recreate this here, now we're just copying and pasting the slide and swapping out the images, right? So we want the outline to be just this pure black. We want the weight to be four because that's what we did in XD. The shape fill should be white. We need to add a text box here. I don't wanna do it like that. Oh, control T here, right? So we want this to be go to the beach. I just wanna quickly kind of build up this slide so you can see now once we have this one done, then we can just copy and paste it and it's like good in storyline because some people they'll build out three slides like this and then they're like, oh, I want to change my button design. Now you don't need to just change it in three places. You need to change it in nine places on each of your three slides, right? So that's another reason to um, just build it one slide at a time and make sure that one slide is perfect. Make sure the visual design is perfect before bringing it into storyline and then make sure your individual slides are really good before duplicating them and bringing that visual design through to other slides. Let's see how this is going. Okay. I think we, I think we get the idea, right? Like, I guess, let me just, um, Group this, I will drag it down, we'll copy and paste. Say indoors and then go camping. And let me know, I mean, if anyone has questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm just gonna keep building this out though because we have a little bit of time. So let me get the Crowdcast window open over here. Okay, you're welcome. I, 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 oh, I see we have questions in the ask a question panel. Let me see if there's anything we missed, okay? I see Sam Wright had a question about how we're using this if a large part of the project is with Beyond. Again, I would just, I, I've done this before. We just bring a Beyond screenshot into the background where the video would be, and then you can add the other UI elements around that prototype the UI elements. If we had time, something I thought would be fun to do here would be to add like a little like happiness meter and like energy meter and stuff like that, like from The Sims. But I, again, this is a, lot to do in one hour. This usually takes me, I usually spend a few days on the visual prototyping side of things so I can step away from it, come back, think about how we can improve it, look for inspiration. And we couldn't fit all of that into an hour. <laughs> okay, I see questions about if we can create infographics using Adobe XD. Um, I think InDesign or Illustrator would be a better tool for that, but you can use XD to mock up any kind of digital design, I would say. Oh, oh, the, and the interactivity, we actually didn't get to that part. I wanna show you that. So let me show you here. So you notice here at the top, and again, I don't usually do this in XD, but it's part of the tool and I think it's useful to know. So at the top, we, we're in this design tab. This is where we just move elements around on the page, change things, all that good stuff. But if we go to this prototype tab, now we can actually make it so that when you select certain elements or interact with certain elements, it will do something, okay? So you notice we clicked this one. Let's see if we can double. So I double clicked into that, um, that mask or that group. And now you see this little right facing arrow. We can drag this over to another artboard. So you see how I drag this over to this slide? So now we see these interaction options over here on the right. The trigger is when you tap it. Okay, so all I, and you know, tap, same thing as a, a click. So now when we select that, we can do something. So we can have some sort of transition and the destination is slide three. And there are these default animations attached, but let's preview this. 
So here's the preview window. Now you see when we hover over this one, there's this interaction option here. So when we select it, it brings us right into that slide. Okay, so just again, now let's do that for the try again button. When you select this try again button, we can drag it up here. And now when you select that, it will bring us back to this slide. So let's check it out. So we'll go to the beach. Oh no, that wasn't right, let's try again. So like we've mentioned, it's very fast and easy to do the interactions in here, but I'm usually not putting this in front of a client. I'm just using this to work out the visuals for myself. Um, and, and, I, and I like using storylines so they can get a feel for like, it, it's more true to like what the project will actually be like in storyline, I would say, but there's no harm. I'm sure there are some people out there who do put these XD files in front of clients. So again, this is just how I use it. And I think you all get the idea without me actually building it out. Once we have this slide done, now we can just duplicate it. We can change the image, change the text, change the answer choices, change the icons. And we have a new question slide. The layout is, is perfect. We know that the layout is good. And same thing with these other slides. Once we have this one brought into storyline, we just duplicate it. We change out the text, change out the image, change out the background color, and we are good. So that's why once we have the, the, the each individual layout, that's what we want to visually prototype in storyline. There's no point in doing another slide in here and changing the text and changing the image and changing this because we're going to have to do that anyway in storyline. So I hope that was clear. Thank you all for hanging out at this one. I hope it, I hope it was as helpful as you all hoped it would be. <laughs> um, and again, I'm happy to answer any other questions about this, but... But yeah, it's a cool tool. It's it's whether you're using Adobe XD or not, it's worth your time to really iterate on those visual designs, like we saw with Cassie and Alex's projects in the beginning. So if there are no more questions, then that is a wrap. This recording will be available immediately afterwards, and I will upload it to my YouTube channel in two weeks. And next week, just as a little teaser, I know some of you are at that um, hiring manage, or some of you are at that question and answer session we did with Joe Steuben, who transferred from full-time history professor to in instructional designer, curriculum developer, developer at Amazon Web Services in like six months time. Um, so we're actually going to do a question and answer session with his hiring manager, Tara, one week from today at the same time slot. So she's going to give some great insights into how they decide who to hire, what was appealing about Joe's application specifically, and what you can do to set yourself out in that hiring process. So it should be a great session. I will see you all in a week. And we'll, of course, do another storyline workshop like this in two weeks. So thank you, everyone. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>